Hey guys, welcome back to Early Easter Crafting. Priscilla here with a little tarot unboxing for you guys. Today, I actually got a bunch on sale uh, from Hay House. Like, so I had a big haul of tarot decks, and then I went to my Patreon and I was like, which one do you guys want me to see open first? And they said this one, so here we are. We're opening this one. This is the Grimalkin's Curious Cats Tarot. And, you know, as a childless cat lady, how could I not open this one up first? <laughs> it was the most obvious answer. So this is the one we're doing. Um, and... This is like surprisingly funny, like coincidentally serendipitous. I just learned what Grimalkin means because I made a new word sheet uh, coming to the store soon. Shameless self-promotion. I actually made several. Um, but a Grimalkin is an old female cat. Uh, so yeah, I just learned this word. And now I have the tarot deck of it. And this is by MJ Coolanane. Coolanane, I hope that's how you say it. Um, and I actually have the majority of this person's decks. I don't know their gender so I'm not assuming uh, but I have the majority of their decks saved in my like wish list and I've never pulled the trigger on one but when I saw this one I was like you don't have a cat tarot and you love cats so I pulled the trigger and I got this one and I'm really excited to cut it open and see what it's like with you guys it is based on the Rider Waite Smith so I think it's going to be a very cool very straightforward hopefully easy to read deck I like the box it's nice and sturdy a little carrot knife to help us pop it open. I got it from Hay House. I'm not sponsored. They could sponsor me, though. I would love to be sponsored. Um, especially uh, for tarot decks, because my budget. Um, well, look at how cute this little box is. They got different cats on both sides. The cover art is nice. Even, like, the inside of the box has nice little touches. It's got our little... Our little Grimalkin in it. Phew. Slip beyond the veil on silent cat paws. How cool is that? I love a fully decked out box. And it looks like we have a very substantial little guidebook here. Ooh, that is substantial. Look at that. <laughs> Look at how beautiful this is. The cards fit the box. <laughs> There's no wasted space. It's excellent design. I love this. Um, so let's, let's take a peep at the book. Uh, so MJ Coolinan is a uh, she. <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't assume because I had no idea. Um, but that's fantastic. That's a little bit about the author back there. It says, thank you to that magical person who sent me the inspiration, the spell, the gift of creation. Because of you, this deck has become real. How neat is that? That's so nice. So we got a little introduction. How to use your deck or get it ready. Some card spreads. Little bits of which card is yes or no, which is a very helpful guide. And you got some maybes in there as well. How to pull for advice. The meow spread. <laughs> Questions from the cats of the major arcana. That's cool. That lets you do like a little bit of shadow work, a little bit of like detail work. Um, getting to know your cards really well and understanding like what that means. Also using those as like springboards for readings is really great. And then we have the major arcana. And it looks like it is just the descriptions, no photos, which is a little, a little bit sad, but it's okay. Oh, and it tells you like what the inspiration behind each one is. So like the magician is dedicated to Coraline. The high priestess is dedicated to Persephone. Kitty pie. <laughs> Lincoln. Interesting. I hope, like, these are, some of these are cat names. It feels like they might be cat names. I should actually read the introduction at some point and figure out if that's, like, the case. Because this feel like, these feel like cat names. So I'm going to guess this was her inspiration um, for it. And I don't want to go back and read all that stuff right now. But yeah, nice, like, hefty, hefty guidebook with lots of information. Which is kind of cool. I saw, oh yeah, okay, I, I had tried to figure out if I had had like a fever dream if there was actual pictures in here. Um, and then it's got a little bit about like the suit up front, which is neat. So it gives you like the elements, the qualities, the positive attributes, negative attributes. There's some symbolism that's present there. And then the uh, majors that would be uh, like affiliated with that suit. That's neat. That's really good. I really like how in-depth the detail is in the guidebook, even though there aren't any pictures. Having pictures would be perfect, but 
that is what it is. There's the back of the box, which is really nice. I love that they decorated all parts of the box. It means that they were very thoughtful about the process. Let's see these card backs. Ew. I like that. Let me drop you guys down a little bit so you can see better. Okay. So we have some like roses. There's some clouds. We have a bunch of moon phases. Some like viney bits. That's very cool. I like I like this card back. It's very nice. There's no edging, which is fun. Might do like a green color to make it match. I can do that myself. It's fine. They don't have to do it. I just like when they do it. And then here we go. So she has like a, a photo reel collage style. Sometimes it's like a little bit more artsy than photographic. So we'll see how this style goes. But I really like it so far. Um, it's really pretty. We have the fool here with this curious kitty. I'm going to guess every kitty um, on the card is the card that she's like dedicating it to. Which is neat. <laughs> but I like this. I like that the dog is on the shore. Um, and there's a bird in the tree. You have this like gator in the water. But also this dragonfly. There's a lot of symbolism hidden in here. Um, but also like a lot of different perils as like the fool sets out on their journey. And I kind of like that a lot. That's really pretty. And then we have the magician, who's like toying with this uh, cocoon, so you get like that playing with transformation, those aspects of the magician, that alchemical sense coming through. Then you have all the tools of the trade. There's also a little caterpillar down here, this little cup of tea. This is a bit more artsy than the first card for the style of the cat, but I still like it a lot. And here we have the high priestess. And look at her. Look how regal she is. And I like that, like, the... Instead of the black and white pillar, we have this, like, lace curtain and then this house plant. Which are both things you don't want your cat to mess with. But also, like... It's a good replacement for those, those particular elements in the tarot. I also like the eye motif. Giving that intuition, third eye sort of vibe. That's a really pretty cat. And then here we have the Empress with her little tiny kitten. How cute! <laughs> we have the little, like, uh, Venus female sim feminine symbol. And then a little tiny mouse here, like, peeking through. Like, it's chill for this mouse to hang out here because it's safe underneath this, like, halo of the Empress. And I like that. That's really pretty. Also, like, the design in the background is kind of getting climped a little bit. There's a lot of, like, really interesting background detail in the styling. So that's very neat. And then we have the Emperor. And look at this, like, grumpy, like, faced, grumpy-faced Maine Coon. They all have these very intense faces, but then, like, a lot of them are just regular cats, you know? Like, so they're all still super sweet and everything. Um, but I love their little grumpy faces. I also like this little golden apple, uh, like, sort of giving forbidden fruit, but also, like, the fruit of knowledge, the golden apples of, like, mythology, that sort of vibe. I like that a lot. And then we have the Hierophant, who has caught a mouse that is holding a key. And then there's this little, little, little tiny cat in the background. But I like that. It's giving, like, obtaining the access to knowledge kind of vibes. Oh, and this is the cover image, and the cover, and the image on the cover of the guidebook as well. So it is the lover's card. I do like how they're connected. Like the little noble lion on top and also the juxtaposition of the sun and the moon is really nice. And then here you have this little like snake underneath the tree. Like eating away at it, just chilling out. I don't know. Representing temptation. But I like that. And the chariot has this little sphinx cat and I love that. I also love that it's being pulled by Dobermans. That's hilarious. Um, it's really neat. I really do like the little background touches on these. It is like very inspired. I do like that. I also like the little blocking in pieces. It is giving climped. It is absolutely giving climped, and I love that a lot. Um, and then we have strength, and it looks like this little kitty is just taming this, like, grumpy dog um, instead of a lion, and I love that a lot. That is really cute. This Everything's going to be really cute, because I love cats so much, guys. <laughs> like, really cute. <laughs> this is the hermit with this little lightning bug. Um, and look how like inquisitive and curious she is even though she's like by herself up in this tree just chilling and vibing out among uh, the flowers. I don't know what kind of flower this is. It's pretty. It's very pretty. 
And then we have the Wheel of Fortune. And you have like this hamster hand, but it's got little birds in it. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's got little birds in it, which is a cool detail. And then you have this little kitten, like trying to catch this snake, but the snake is also trying to catch this bird. And there's just a lot of stuff happening here. Which I think is pretty good for the Wheel of Fortune. And then we have Justice. And the eyes are like blurred out. Giving Justice is blind. Which I like. But also like the way that this sword is like angled to hit this heart. Which is also the bird's heart. You know like sometimes the innocent get punished when you know Justice is had. And using the birds to balance the scale is really cute. And then we have the Hanged Man. Which it just seems like um, this cat maybe isn't holding on to anything. And its tail is just being held onto by the crows in the tree um, that it climbed up into. Which is a very interesting choice. I do like the little halo around it. And we see another little caterpillar going on here. Oh, and this one's sad. <laughs> I know this kitty's just like rolling around on the floor. But it's death. <laughs> and that makes me sad. And then you have this like fiery goddess figure in the background. Um, with this wolf details are so tiny but they are very detailed cards and then you have this very decorated cat skeleton it's very pretty it's a very sad card though I'm gonna just move right along and then we have temperance which looks like this cat's like thinking taking her time not trying to just dive in head first to all these dumping fish which definitely works and then we have the devil which is giving like the Devil's Carnival, Devil's Arcade type stuff. This little mouse, like, being tempted by the cheese. And all these mouse traps around it. That's very intense. Very, very intense imagery. <laughs> and then we have the tower, which is cats on a wrecking ball. Which is definitely tower vibes. Um, definitely tower vibes. I, that's a very interesting choice. I would have imagined, like, a falling cat tree. But wrecking ball is, is appropriate for the tower. For sure. They're like in this old looking building. There's cats everywhere. I don't know what's going on here. It's like a moldy bathtub. It's just, there's a lot, there's a lot going on in here. <laughs> I do like that these cards are borderless. And, you know, you just get the little like label of the card on the bottom. I do like that. I like that the picture goes edge to edge on these. And then we have this star. And then this little precious kitty. Just like chilling out. Sleeping underneath the star. With this really delicate background. There's lots of root imagery here, which is really nice. And we have the moon. I'm like, look at this little cat just looking out here at the moon, and the moon is a cheetah. The moon is a cheetah, and I love that. I love that so much. There's a really cool vibe. And then we have the sun, and look how beautiful. <laughs> With all the flowers and the birds, and this like little happy, perky-looking cat. Very attentive. I also like the passion flowers part of this. And then we have Judgment in a graveyard, um, which is very interesting. I also like that we're getting three different colors of cats. And then you have little cats like on the tombstones. Lots of detail. I love that. I really like that, like the style of these cards. And then we have the world. It's very interesting. This this cat is like Atlas, like holding up the world. Uh, <laughs> all these other cats are just chilling out alongside, being like, "Hey." What's going on? You got, you got the world on your shoulders, bud? That's okay. But that's cool. That's a very interesting card. And then we have an extra card. I think that there, they said that there were two extra cards in this. There are... I believe there are 80 cards in this. I can't remember where I saw that, but I saw that with my eyes. And typically there's 78. So, a couple extra cards, which I'm not mad about. Um, and we have Unity. It's really cute. It's this really cute little, like, trinity of cats just sleeping peacefully. So that's a very nice card. Oh, and we have the Grimalkin, of course. <laughs> we have our old, like, wise Norwegian forest cat. There's a bat and an owl back there, a little fox. Definitely being, like, very seasoned, wizened, observing. Then we have the Ace of Wands. So we have this little curious kitty stepping out on the wand. I like that like the birds too. We have the two of wands. I'm going to go through these a little bit faster than I did the majors so like we're not here forever and ever. And then we have the three of wands. I like the cactusy background of this. I like that um like the wands are represented here. 
with literal wands that have like little cactus flowers on them. But I also like that it matches the number of birds in the sky. We have the four of wands and we have these two kitties like playing with some yarn. And they've made this big old mess, this big old tangled mess, but they're having such a good time. And we have the five of wands and the wands are actually cat toys, which is really cute. But I love how engaged this little guy is. All these cats are really pretty too, which I love. We have the Six of Wands, which is this cat on a fence, and these other cats are like looking up to them. So this is like the big cat in town, clearly, because all these cats are very like focused on what this cat is doing. Or maybe just the birds up there. Who knows? <laughs> we have the Seven of Wands. <laughs> we just have this very surprised kitty who's like, oh my god, all my wands are falling. How could I have let this happen? But there's also like little bees at the end of every wand which is interesting. And then we have this like zoom kitty like just flying through the sky with these birds and all the wands, <laughs> which is fun. And oh, the nine of wands is this silken white kitty cat. <laughs> but she's so cute. <laughs> also love the flowers here. There's like a good mix of like artsy flowers and realistic flowers. That's really nice. And the ten of wands. It looks like this kitty like knocked this web like web nest out of the tree and all the wands were like part of the support there we have the page of wands which is like another one of those very keyed in cats ready to like pounce on the toy but the wand itself is on fire which is interesting because you know wands are fire so like that's normal but like in relation to the page i don't know how much i love that because like they're not engaged together. It's like two separate motifs, but it's still pretty cool. And then we have the Knight of Wands. And it's running along with these horses. This cat might actually be faster than horses because you see it has speed lines, which is good. Also, these horses are on fire, which is an interesting choice. And we have the Queen of Wands, and I love her, so sunshiny, with like all of her, her sunflowers in the background, and her little like lion-headed chair is cute. Um, I don't love that her chair looks like it's on fire, <laughs> but you know, we'll, we'll say that's artistic license. And then we have the King of Wands, who is attacking the bird despite the fire, which is normal. We also have a salamander, which is also associated with a fire, so that's a cool element. And now we're in Cups, and Cups is all about water and the emotions, and we have the Ace of Cups. We have this little heavenly kitty cat with her little paw, a little pity pond. <laughs> She's got her little toes in the pity pond uh, of the cup, which is cute. <laughs> if you've ever had a cat, they have definitely stuck their paw in your cup, and if you say they never have, trust, they have. You just weren't looking. <laughs> uh, and now you have the Two of Cups. <laughs> We have this mirrored image of these cute little Siamese kitties. And the Three of Cups. Got some spilled cups. Looks like maybe this one knocked it over. Look how smug this one is. Like, absolutely look at how smug this one is. You knocked over both of these cups. And you'll do it again. And then we have the Four of Cups. And I love this little chunky guy. <laughs> look how cute he is with little chunky cheeks. Just want to pinch him. Uh, that's cute aggression for you. And then we have the three cups down here and the one cup in the tree. Looking like maybe he doesn't have enough cups even though he has plenty of cups. We have the five of cups here. So you have a couple cups overflowing, a couple cups spilled, and we're only focusing on those. It's a very good use of cat and arrangement of cups. I like the roses in the background. That carries through. We have the Six of Cups. We just have these two cats just enjoying all the abundance. I love that. We have the Seven of Cups. Look how dreamy this little kitty is. Look how cute. <laughs> like all the things that cats love and think about. Like fire. Because, <laughs> you know, who, what, who, whose cat does not want to destroy the world a little bit? And we have the Eight of Cups. And we have another great Sphinx cat. I would love to have a Sphinx cat, you guys. I'm actually obsessed with them. They're so cute. Um, but they're also much more maintenance than I'm willing to do, so I'm not taking on that burden. But look at how cute they are. I, I want a friend who has a Sphinx cat who is willing to do all the labor so that I can come pet their Sphinx cat. <laughs> and look at how nice this is. This is a really cute card. And then we have the Nine of Cups. I don't know if I love this one. There's like some weird 
weird shapes happening there. But it is a still a very standard, very nice card. Oh, <laughs> look at this one! This is so cute! Look at these little babies! They're so cute! <laughs> it's the Ten of Cups. We have all the abundance, all the wealth, all the glory. The prosperity, I love that. And we have the Page of Cups. And here we have the page interacting with the cup, which is all I want. <laughs> I guess, like, they can't interact with the fire, so it makes sense. But we have this really cool, like, ocean motif back background, and then this little kitty playing with the fish that's naturally appearing from the cup. We have another horse. It's not my favorite choice of a uh, mount for cats, but um, here we are. <laughs> we have the Knight of Cups. We have this cute little Sphinx cat. Again, we have another little symbol of transformation. You have the moon has, like, the emotional vibe in the background. Very neat. We have the Queen of Cups. And this is like a like one of those little curly Devon Rex type cats. And I also love them. They're very cute. I like the little crab coming through here. And then some more of those waves coming up is really nice. And then we have another piggy dipper in the piggy pond. Uh, <laughs> little King of Cups. And I like this like transformation of like these rocky waters to these very calm seas. I like that. It also gives like salmon migration, which is neat. That's a cute little cat, too. And then we have the Ace of Swords. We have this cat sitting atop the sword, looking like they're ready to strike some of these birds in the space. We have the Two of Swords. We have this cat doing a very precarious balancing act. This one's also very watercolory, which is a cool choice. We have the Three of Swords. This poor kitty, look at that. Even the kitty's face looks betrayed. <laughs> so sad. We have the Four of Swords. And this kitty, like, just try to sleep while this raven is, like, running amok in the background, making all sorts of noises. And we have the Five of Swords here. And this cat looks so smug. And look how put out this dog looks. This cat absolutely beats the shit out of that cat, like, that dog every time that dog comes near him. And look how smug. He's just like, yeah, that's right. This is actually my bed. <laughs> Even though it's your bed, it's my bed. You sit over there in the corner with all the swords hovering over you menacingly. It's also a very interesting choice that we're back in this, like, abandoned-looking building. And we have another Sphinx cat, which is so excited. I'm just excited that they were featured players. How neat is this? And there's, like, this interesting balance of, like, sea, land, and sky coming into play here. Of course, this cat's, like, taking a little voyage. And we have the Seven of Swords. Um, which is, you know, a very clear example of why you shouldn't let your cats outside because they hunt just for fun. And they actually decimate local bird populations, so like, things. <laughs> Thoughts and feelings. Uh, we have the Eight of Swords, and this little cat, like, watching the water come down, which is exactly what my cat does in the bathtub. <laughs> I have to leave, like, the faucet running for them so they can watch it. Um, because it's just so fascinating. <laughs> so that's a very true to life uh, depiction. And we have the Nine of Swords. And not only is this cat being haunted, they're being haunted by, like, bird rib cage, bird cage ribs, the cat here. Very spooky. Very scary. But a really cool card. <laughs> and, oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> I need, I need these all to be censored immediately. Uh, this Ten of Swords with this kitty who's been stabbed a bunch by these swords and is sort of laying out, becoming part of the earth again, and it makes me very sad, so we're moving on. Uh, then we have the Page of Swords, and this cat absolutely screaming at this bird to, like, get off its sword, which is hilarious. And then um, this Knight of Swords, who looks like they're about to cause some havoc in the attempt to catch this bird. And, like, horses are so dangerous. Get away. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. And look, we have our Queen of Swords. I love that. I love how, like, regal they look. It's getting bestet. And I love that. I also love this looks like a piece of outdoor furniture. Because that would be a throne for a kitty. Oh, and look how sweet the King of Swords is, guys. <laughs> look at that. Those big ol' eyes. So sweet. We got a peacock hanging out here. Very regal. I don't know how authoritative this is, but I, I think this cat gets what it wants. And then we have the Ace of Pentacles, and this one is playing with the little pentacle. 
Love that. And then the Two of Pentacles, where we have a cat playing with some mice. And the mice are like dolled up like coins, which is neat. Also like that the poppies make like a, a through line through this. You see them in a lot of the cards. It adds to like the connective feel of everything. And then we have the Three of Pentacles, and we have these little alley cats running amok back here on these trash cans, which would be a place of abundance for an outdoor like street cat. And we have the Four of Pentacles. <laughs> look, at, look at how intense this cat's face is. It has caught all four of these mice, and it's like, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to start. Oh my god, <laughs> a little overstimulated, and that's really cute. Oh no, bring your cats in. <laughs> we have the Five of Pentacles, and we have these very chilly, snowed-on little kitties who are outdoors, begging to come inside, and I would absolutely let them in. We have the Six of Pentacles, that trash can motif makes a, another appearance. And along with some fish, as well as this, like dangling crumbs when you have all this abundance. Very good way to like demonstrate the meaning of that card. And we have the seven of pentacles. And I can't tell if this cat is actually looking at the birds or just kind of looking down over the land. I feel like it's the latter and it's having one of those like everything the light touches is my kingdom moments. That's what it feels like. Then we have the eight of pentacles and we have this like sweet little unbothered queen hanging out here with all of the wealth and prosperity and I love that. There's also a like just little little black cat hanging out there in the background. Symbol of ill omen which is unfair to black cats. Um, so to me just a symbol of another kitty. And then we have the nine of pentacles. And this very attentive, very bright little cat just hanging out with its little mouse bud in this like very serene setting. I love that. And then we have the Ten of Pentacles. And it looks like this cat like shared the wealth. It was like, hey, come to my garden. We got all the catnip you want. Birds for days. Just hang out here. And this cat's like, yeah, look at all the stuff I got. And I love that. And we have the Page of Pentacles. And this one is interacting with the pentacle but also more focus on the birds which is fair it's a cat um, I do love the way that these backgrounds are looking they're so pretty I'm glad that I got this one first for like my first deck from this particular like author and artist we have the knight of pentacles and we have this cat with a pumpkin and like some squash flowers which is cool I like the earthiness of that it's not giving action but it's giving growth and I think that works that works for the night card. And then the Queen of Pentacles, who is also more focused on a bird than what's happening on screen, but that's fine. Um, she's also very cute. And this little rabbit jumping through. You can see all the abundance around her. Very nice. And look at the little King of Pentacles. He's so cute, too. <laughs> so he's definitely surrounded by the same amount of abundance. He's got a couple more friends with him. And he's not even worried about the birds because he's just like, yeah, we're all here hanging out. Just chilling, me and my friends. And it's very cute. It's also in this very overgrown, like, area. So it's giving all the abundance, all the prosperity. And I love that. This is a really nice little sweet little deck. I think I will really enjoy using this. The pictures and imagery is very straightforward. Um, so easy to interpret, even without the guidebook. Um, but I am interested in going through the guidebook and, like, understanding some of the choices that were made in the designs. And um, the symbol, like, the dim 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 words are really hard the symbology that the the art like the author chose um for some of this stuff i'm just really interested in looking into that also interested in learning the two new cards that they added to this deck um which is a really cool little little feature um but let me know you guys what did you think of grimalkin's curious cats tarot let me know in the comments down below and that's gonna be it for me guys if you made it to the end of the video i appreciate your faces and i'll catch you guys all in the next one until then happy crafting bye